Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to both you and uh, the uh, ranking member, Senator Bozeman, for holding this hearing today. Appreciate it very much. Uh, Under Secretary Taylor, I have a number of questions for you. Thanks to all of you for being here today. Appreciate it. Uh, one of the programs that's very important uh, to us in uh, North Dakota it, uh, is the uh, sugar program. Uh, the Red River Valley, which we share, Red River Valley of the North, which we share with Minnesota, it's about a $3 billion industry. And uh, obviously, uh, it, it's important that we pass it and we get it right. And of course, this, I should also want to remind you that this is very important to the chairman of the committee, too, because they do raise sugar beets in Michigan. So I know that it's a matter of great importance to our chairman as well. So I want to make sure you're aware of that. Um, but it's about a $3 billion in We all like sugar. <laughs> and I know the ranking member is trying to downplay his intense concern about the program it, as sure. well. Um, I'm not sure if they're doing sugar beets in Arkansas, but they do other things, and they like having us support them on their crops. So he's a strong advocate as well. Uh, the, uh, but anyway, the, the policy is designed to provide a cost-effective safety net for our sugar producers and, and avoid foreign producers dumping on the market, which provides a low-cost, consistent sugar price for American consumers. And it's very important that the program is administered in a way that's consistent with the intent in the Farm Bill. So uh, my question is, do you agree that USDA's, your own metric, the Department of Ag's metric, a stocks-to-use ratio between 13.5% and 15.5% is appropriate when determining whether the sugar market is adequately supplied. And I know that's kind of technical, but it's very important because it has a big impact for our producers. Uh, thank you, Senator Hoven. So the sugar program is um, being administered um, between myself under the Trade and Foreign Agricultural Affairs Mission Area and the Far FPAC um, and Undersecretary Robert Bonney. Um, this is a newer um, structure um, as uh, USDA was reorganized several years ago with the creation of my position. Um, I believe, you know, we have long administered the sugar program within that stocks to use ratio. Um, it is well known. Um, and it was developed to cre really try to meet the intent that Congress laid out about adequate supplies at reasonable prices um, in the Farm Bill. And we are committed to using that metric um, to manage the sugar program. Well, and we actually had uh, Secretary Bonnie out to see us and, and met with our producers, which we appreciate very much. And I, th I think it was productive for him to hear from them as well. But based on your answer then, uh, when the market's adequately supplied according to that measure, uh, then you believe that um, we should not be allowing additional imports, even though we get pressure from some of our trading partners to do that sometimes, as long as we're meeting those metrics. Um, correct, Senator. That is how we have um, historically run the program and how we are running that program today. Because again, it, we are trying to be transparent in how we are running the program and making those decisions. In addition, we have the suspension agreement with Mexico, um, which lays out um, a trigger or tie to the SOX to use ratio. So I think that's an important component. <clears throat> Glad you touched on that because they're always pushing to uh, increase their imports into our market. And I find that interesting at a time when they want to restrict our corn exports to Mexico. So on the one hand, we need to resist that, their efforts to dump into our market. And on the other hand, they need to abide by WTO when it comes to sales of GMO corn to Mexico. Do you agree with that? Um, Senator, I do believe that um, the provisions laid out with it, within the USMCA, what Mexico committed to, are foundationally built upon science, and we have grave concerns that their proposed ban on GE corn um, walks away from that science that they have committed to. Um, and I actually was in Mexico two weeks ago meeting with my counterparts to highlight our concerns um, from what Mexico has proposed. And I've seen the Ag Secretary, Secretary Vilsack, pushing back. And I trust you all are going to continue to do that, right? Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, thank you. And then uh, trade in the Indio, in the uh, Pacific, um, obviously that's complicated. We've, we've tried a number of different approaches. Tell me about how you're going to expand our ability to, to sell and to trade in, in the Pacific. 
Um, I think this is a very exciting uh, part of the world. They have growing middle classes, that they have um, growing economies, and they have a generally young population. Um, when I think about uh, Vietnam, for instance, uh, they're projected to add 5 million middle class households over the next five years. So we have the ability today to build trading relationships, um, to help our producers get into those markets, um, to build those long-term relationships and build uh, and create lifelong consumers of American food and agriculture products. I think that's a huge market potential. Um, we at USDA are invested in these regions um, and um, with we've got um, our foreign agricultural service uh, has teams on the ground in this region we are working with uh, US exporters uh, of their to get their products in um, we focus uh, many trade activities um, and then of course we also have the Indo-Pacific economic framework which we are focused on while it's still young we are focused that's why I bring it up providing um, meaningful um, access to knocking down those non-tariff trade barriers that are limiting factors today. Um, and we are interested to see where that uh, framework can go to continue to help advance U.S. agricultural interests in the region. Right, right on. And I've joined with Senator Thune on a letter in regard to that. So I appreciate that very much.